Understanding geopolitics at the moment can be really hard. The world is really confusing, it's perplexing, there are strange things happen, there are wars going on, and there's uh, a million sources of information uh, going everywhere. So uh, amongst all that confusion, one of the best things you can do is just uh, take a a bit of a long-term perspective and try to understand the world today through reading some good history books. So this video is about giving you five tips from me about the five best history books that I would recommend for making sense of the confusing multipolar world that is emerging today and opening up your minds to some different versions of the stories of history and of the uh, diverse uh, politics, civilizations and societies and cultures that we find all around the world. Okay, so I'm going to give you five tips and there'll be links to uh, where you can get these books uh, down in the description below. Now, the first book is by uh, the uh, British imperial historian John Darwin and it's called After Tamerlan, The Rise and Fall of Global Empires. It's called After Tamerlan, probably uh, was the last great Mongol emperor who controlled a very, very, very large part of Eurasia. Uh, even getting uh, threatening uh, the gates of Europe and um, but was ultimately unable to keep it all together and in a way uh, John Darwin's sort of story is about how people aspire to control Eurasia and the world island it's that common theme in a lot of uh, geopolitics discussion like Halford Mackinder he who controls the heartland controls the world island. He who controls the world island controls the world. Uh, that aspiration is all, has never really proved successful. Uh, and uh, there is a huge lesson there. And I think this is perhaps the one best single volume to really understand the deep historical dynamics uh, that have shaped the world that we're in today, including uh, how the world has uh, transformed over the last uh, 50 years and the rather unique position that America found itself in after uh, 1989. Could not recommend this book uh, highly enough uh, it will uh, much. It will greatly enrich your understanding of all the different uh, players on the world stage today. The second book is by Felipe Fernandez Armesto, who is, a, um, I think, a kind of a British, Spanish, Portuguese historian who who specialises in sort of global history. Uh, but also environmental history. And this is a study of civilizations with a difference. He, he very much takes the view that there are many civilizations and that civilization itself is not um, uh, a unique thing that belongs to Western civilization or classical civilization or even Chinese civilization. It is a common process that all human society, or nearly all human societies have undertaken to adapt the environment uh, to their needs and to their ideas. And in uh, Civilizations, Fernandez Amesto looks at uh, how uh, gives you a huge uh, array of different stories of how different civilizations and societies have emerged and adapted in all the different environmental niches uh, around the world from the Arctic to the tropical highlands and lowlands. Uh, 
uh, the river plains, the river valleys, the deserts, uh, the woodlands, the jungle. And he, he, he gives you a deep pluralistic understanding of that extraordinary cultural diversity. And it opens your mind up to just how uh, different and diverse people and their social arrangements can be. So absolutely fabulous book. Could not recommend it uh, more highly. Uh, and it also gives you a deeper understanding of how humans have adapted in uh, their environments. Uh, and then uh, the next book is uh, this one by David Abalafia, The Boundless Sea, A Human History of Oceans. And it's a, it's a long book, but again, it's a little bit like uh uh, Fernandez de Mesto. It will give you a comprehensive view of how uh, people have lived in, by, and through oceans um, uh, and how that has changed dramatically over time. How the Pacific Ocean was first populated. Uh, the Indian Ocean is one of the first um, great areas of uh, commerce and trade and cultural exchange, the later development of the Atlantic Ocean, and then how after 1492 these various oceans began to be in conversation until uh, from the mid 19th century with steamships and ultimately then container shipping and aircraft. Um, the oceans become sort of contained into one vast network. Uh, brilliant book. Uh, it gives you a different insight to a lot of geopolitical discussions and focus on continents and Eurasia and control of continents. And it has some uh, fascinating discussion towards the end about uh, the enormous uh, container port cities uh, and the enormous trade in container shipping that is so fundamental to how how, how uh, supply chains and how our world actually operates today. Uh, absolutely brilliant book. Totally recommend it. Okay, the next book is by a very distinguished historian, Dominique Levin, and it's called In the Shadow of the Gods, uh, The Emperor in World History. Uh, this was only published this year, uh, and it is exceptional in that it, it sort of tries to look at the role of the emperor in a rounded sense in terms of personalities and role. It's all not just big structural forces it actually gives you a bit of an insight into what it's actually like to be an emperor uh, how's that different to being a like a, a leader of a state uh, or even a big you know powerful state like china and america or russia today but it also uh, gives you a deep understanding of the 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 rich history of all those different parts of the world so he looks at the ancient near east the persian emperors the roman emperors ashoka in india the early chinese emperors the nomadic empires uh, including the mongols uh, the tang and song dynasties in china the islamic caliphate the first global emperors of the Spanish Empire, Charles V and Philip II, the Ottoman dynasty, the Mughals uh, in India, and I guess Afghanistan, uh, the Ming and Qing dynasties in China uh, from like the 1600s through to um, uh, 1920 or so, and the Romanovs in Russia, uh, the late European em emperors like the Habsburgs and Napoleon and then finally the transition uh, out of empire so to speak uh, up to 1945. We might live in a world now today with, without empires but 
so many of the lessons of, uh, as it, without emperors in the sense of hereditary monarchs. But uh, this book also gives you a deep insight to what it would really be like to be a world leader, uh, such as Joe Biden or Vladimir Putin or Xi Jinping, and have those kind of uh, weighty, weighty issues on your shoulder. The last recommendation is more a category of a book rather than a specific one, but certainly this one I'm going to show you here, I highly recommend, and that is the Castle Atlas of World History, or uh, another historical world atlas. Now, you may not even know that you can get such a thing as a historical world atlas, but you can. And, you know, that can show you, for example, the just choose a, you know, the arrangements in Europe, feudal Europe in, you know, like 1000 to 1300. Uh, and particularly, uh, you can also get specialized historical atlases like this one, the Restless Empire, a historical atlas of Russia which uh, is and this one is like being fascinating in the context of the ukraine uh dispute so you can see that map there that shows the uh international borders in 1914 the ukraine state which declared independence from soviet russia in 1917 and then the various uh, iterations of that including uh, the areas that are claimed by Ukraine, which go, as you can see, the current Ukraine actually, I mean, they might be fighting there, but they're claiming all the way, almost all the way to the Caspian Sea, some of the Ukrainian uh, nationalists. So uh, fascinating. So historical atlas is a great way to ground yourself and to understand all these strange and different places um, that we sort of learn about a little bit fitfully and what the real background to to them uh, is and also how things have changed over time. Uh, so that's five great books to understand the world today with and there are links below so I hope you uh, like and subscribe and share this video. More from me again soon. Bye.